For the past couple of years, the nation Cameroon is faced with a series of conflicts threatening the peaceful nature that the country has been reputed for. With the attacks by Boko Haram in the north, the Anglophone crisis in the northwest and southwest regions, and the pending 2018 multiple elections with potentials for violence looming, the peace of the nation is threatened more than ever before. Journalists in Cameroon are increasingly faced with a new challenge in reporting these events, which to them is relatively new, given the peaceful atmosphere under which they have been reporting. Media is supposed to come in and kind of play, a, I can say, a mid middle role in order to put all parties together, report issues as they appear or as they see them in a way that they help in the development of any country socially, politically, economically. The most important thing about the media in Cameroon is censorship. First of all, self-censorship, knowing what to report and what not to report, and especially if you look at what is happening in the country. There's social tension, there's political tension. Elections are coming up in 2018. That's another big challenge for the journalists. What are they doing? Are they improving on their capacities to report better than they did the last time? Because some of them, during elections, they jump on election trends that create a lot of sensation, that create a lot of problems. And at the end of the day, when the results are published, there is that problem. You see post-election violence and too much trouble. On top of what we are already experiencing in the country, Boko Haram is there, the Anglophone problem is there. There's social tension because of inflation. So there are lots of problems already in the country. So if the journalists play their role and report in a way that will kind of, not sacrificing the ethics of the profession, but report in a responsible manner, looking at the consequences of the words they use, the images they use, and the kind of things that they say. The coming to Cameroon of Professor Stephen Youngblood to work with journalists, thanks to the Cameroon Community Media Network, the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, the American Embassy and other partners is described by many as very timely. Stephen Youngblood, I'm the uh, director of the Center for Global Peace Journalism at Park University. Uh, we're in Missouri in the United States, right in the middle of the country. Um, this is my first visit to uh, Cameroon. Uh, I've been here a grand total of uh, 24 hours. Uh, so. Uh, Obviously, I have a long way to go before I can reach anything like uh, conclusions. I will tell you, uh, here at the first day of our seminar, we're doing a peace journalism seminar here at the Frederick Ebert Foundation. Um, here at the first day of our seminar with the journalists, um, it's just been a fascinating discussion. They're a very uh, interested and engaged group, and I'm taking in so much about, uh, about media in uh, Cameroon. You know, as far as peace journalism is concerned, um, what I always say wherever I go is that I think peace journalism can apply everywhere. Uh, how it can apply, um, in what ways it can apply, I think is going to be different from place to place. So before I came here, I was in Ethiopia for a week. So they certainly have a unique media environment and situation where everything is completely controlled by the government. So the kind of peace journalism that you would have in uh, there would, I think, look different than the peace journalism in Cameroon. It all began in Yaoundé at the Friedrich Ebert Foundation, where journalists from the center, south and northern regions benefited skills and knowledge on peace and reconciliation, electoral and conflict reporting for three days, with the director of the Center for Global Peace Journalism. Participants at the workshop greatly appreciated the opportunity, having gained great knowledge on the concepts treated. After the seminar, I've gained a lot. Live working in a predominantly Muslim community where we have a lot of torso between Christians and Muslims and also 
influx of refugees have learned how to report peacefully using the right diction using the right words and without creating conflict and also what a peace journalist is supposed to avoid when reporting things concerning conflict refugees migrants and most importantly we are at the verge of our elections which will take place in 2018 which most of the times creates a lot of problem when it has to do with media reporting so i've learned what it takes to do political reports without taking sides j'ai appris que à partir d'aujourd'hui je saurai comment aller euh, intervenir en cas de conflit nous savons jamais il y a beaucoup de partis des partis politiques euh, il faut savoir qui euh, élire et je saurai comment aller les parler Faites comme ça, faites comme ça, parce qu'il y a tellement de problèmes que nous vécons chaque fois quand il y a élection. I did not know that uh, there was something like peace journalism existing. So it was a discovery for me uh, to realize that actually there's another kind of journalism. And I really, I was really, I really appreciated. I was really impressed. Uh, I've learned a lot of things, how to cover uh, events, without putting petrol on fire, uh, particularly for our country. We are waiting for uh, many elections next, week, two, uh, next year, 2018, uh, 2018. And uh, I think what I've learned here will help me uh, to um, contribute to peace. Uh, nous ne sommes pas juste des journalistes, mais nous serons à partir d'aujourd'hui des journalistes de paix. Ça veut dire que nous allons euh, faire la culture de la paix. Il faut que, à travers la transmission de toutes nos informations, que ce soit des informations de paix. Donc, euh, et par, pendant toute cette période, pendant les trois jours d'atelier, j'ai beaucoup plus apprécié euh, les, les expressions qu'il ne faut pas utiliser pour éviter, euh, pour éviter de toucher, par exemple, la population qui peut exciter, qui peut radicaliser les personnes. Comme par exemple... Euh, le, le présentateur a parlé par exemple de, des terroristes de l'islam, des musulmans terroristes. In Bamenda, the regional capital of the Northwest region, Professor Stephen Youngblood held in-house trainings with journalists of Bamenda-based CBS Radio and Foundation Radio, during which issues of peace-related and responsible reporting on elections and conflicts were discussed. I think the idea was that, uh, you know, peace journalism has, I think, some interesting principles that, in my experience, are widely applicable in a number of situations, including electoral reporting. So what, what I'm here um, talking about is laying out some ideas and um, asking the journalists here uh, if and how they think that these principles might apply uh, here in Bominda. He will later hold a training workshop with journalists from local media organs of the northwest and western region of the country, including civil society organizations, at the Presbyterian Church Center, Tamulung, Bamenda. The lessons were deep and very enriching, as testified by participants. I attend the workshop, and then uh, I suppose that the workshop was very rich in terms of uh, lessons uh, concerning uh, media in the context of uh, conflict, in the, the context of uh, uh, electoral issues, in the context of uh, a crisis even. And they told us that the journalist or the journalist have an uh, important role to play in terms of uh, sensitization of uh, the public in terms of uh, uh, the way of uh, uh, publishing the news, in terms of uh, words we have, we have to choose uh, when we are, we, are, we are on the air. And then uh, 
we are going back with uh, rich experience from other countries uh, coming concerning uh, elections issues we are we have um, guidelines guidelines concerning the way we are going to to, to work uh, within our media so i think that uh, the workshop was appropriate for us because we are used to uh, producing programs grâce à à GBS prendre part à, à cet atelier et notre rôle dans l'atelier consiste à accompagner les mêmes radios communautaires avec lesquelles nous travaillons dans le monde à capter les nouvelles techniques de communication non violente sur le terrain et aussi comment amener les populations la communauté du monde dans ce climat préélectoral euh, à pouvoir collecter le maximum de données objectives, des données objectives et pouvoir les transmettre telles quelles, sans avoir à prendre parti, à prendre aucun parti que ce soit. Et au final de, de l'atelier, nous comptons mettre en place une petite structure, une petite structure de communication. Not to use the hate language. Um, most of our projects center around council, municipal councils and going to organize a workshop in the municipal council, especially one that is a shared council, having different political parties is very challenging because there are some moments where you have friction between the opponents and you as the moderator, as a facilitator, you have to be very, very careful not to take sides, but you have to use a peaceful way to make them understand your point of view or to understand the others. This is so, um, just to ensure that next time if you have to go into the same community, you'll be welcome and the leaders to understand that no, this person did not take sides, did not say my opinion was right or wrong. Um, another thing that I'm going to take away from the workshop will be about um, not only using the peace language um, with political leaders, even among in, in, in the office. How do you uh, relate with others in the office in such a way that everybody can be very productive? It's my first time of hearing uh, issues of reporting with our uh, avoiding hate speech. I think uh, throughout my work as a journalist, especially with the private sector, we have always known that uh, you want to hear politicians say those things that people want to hear. But we really know that some of these hate and inciting speech are things that actually provoke crisis and provoke violence. And uh, today we have, I have, of one, have understood that uh, it's necessary to avoid issues that could create crisis as a journalist when reporting. Because it's through journalists that you could mitigate crises that may have to occur. And still through journalists, you can span the crisis to us. So I've learned that. The Bermuda trip also featured visits and talks with communication administrators in the Northwest region, notably the Regional Delegate of Communication for the Northwest. The Bermuda mission was crowned on a relaxed and light mood in a dinner seminar with journalists. Uh, we at CBS Boya and also at CBS Pamenda, uh, we are deeply concerned about how uh, the media landscape is developing and what responsibilities uh, journalists have and what role they can play in conflict transformation, in conflict resolution, in reconciliation of uh, society, but also in a preventive measure uh, not to come when it's already too late, but already think uh, when uh, possible events of frictions and conflict can come up. And so my message for you journalists, <coughs> journalists, journalists, I'm talking about communication, which is your domain and your province, province, you know what I'm talking about. How many of you really communicate? And I from what you were saying that there are very few journalists in the world where there are so many journalists. How many of you undergo intrapersonal communication, especially at a time like this. As a Christian, we are going through a serious crisis. 
That for eight months, children from two regions of the country have not been going to school, and that the courts have not had their lawyers. And there's a general malaise. Shift the attention of uh, uh, the, the citizens to start arguing on, on that. And then the real people who want to contest, who want to go in the immediate incumbent, could just go do his thing nicely. And the journalists are there talking about the doofies while the real things are cooking behind. So that's for me. Trust. In the Southwest region, Professor Stephen Youngblood held similar working sessions with journalists working in Meme Division. The Kumba based journalists also benefited from the professional know how of the Peace Journalism Crusader in different peace and electoral reporting aspects. Instead, Peace Journalism recognizes that our first responsibility is to the public. And I think that's especially important around the time of the election because I think we have an important responsibility to inform the public about the issue, or to listen to the public about the issues involved in the election. In-house training and working sessions were also carried out in Limbe, capital city of FACO division, with journalists working with Eden radio station as well as those working with the Advocate newspaper. Discussions centered on responsible journalism during times of crisis and the coming elections. But to do reporting about, to do issue-based reporting, reporting about the things that really matter to the people on the ground. Um, road, right. So, so, so what I would say is that um, and you're right, one of the big criticisms of peace journalism is that somehow it's not objective. Somehow it's advocacy journalism. The visiting professor also used the studios of Eden Radio to explain the concepts of peace journalism for the understanding of the audience of the radio. Soon we have Ndika George for presentation. I am Dixon Njoke. I am accompanied in this studio by Solomon Temban who will join me to interview our guest. We have here in the studio, Professor Stephen Youngblood. He came in with um, Alexander Voda from CBS Radio. They will be talking to us on peace journalism. They are also here with the chief executive officer of um, Eden Media Group, who thought it wise to bring to Eden experts in peace journalism, which is a new concept that is being introduced into the media landscape in, in Cameroon. I will first of all begin by welcoming our guest, Professor Stephen Youngblood. You are welcome to Limbe and to Eden Radio. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Mr. Alexander, you are welcome. Thank you very much for having us. Solomon Tembang, we are about to talk on peace uh, uh, journalism. I think you have the first question. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Prof. You are coming to Cameroon. What brings you here? What is this peace uh, journalism concept all about? Well, uh, peace journalism in a nutshell is uh, when reporters and editors make choices that can create an atmosphere <laughs> conducive to peace. So we're talking about reporting in such a way that during elections or during any times of crisis, that we're not adding fuel to the fire, that we're not taking a difficult, tense situ situation and making it even worse. Also present for the Limbe sessions was the Divisional Delegate of Communication for FACO Division. In Boya, journalists from all the six divisions that make up the Southwest region were trained in a workshop. Professor Stephen Youngblood took journalists through the notion of peace and reconciliation journalism, juxtaposing aspects of peace conflict-oriented journalism against traditional war journalism. The training discussed characteristics of peace journalism language, terrorism coverage in media, the role of radio in conflicts with examples of the Rwandan genocide. Journalists were also taught 
guidelines for electoral reporting, amongst others. Of the media, especially peace journalists, is to be able to report making choices of using words and videos that give an enabling environment for peace to reign. The media is supposed to craft programs that gear towards peace, reconciliation, programs that gear towards the unitary states of Cameroon, programs that, gear, that give voices to the voiceless. We want to attest that um, after uh, two days of uh, intense cooling, uh, I'll be heading home quite happy, quite rich, with knowledge on the peace journalism and how to uh, handle uh, unrest crisis in the country, especially now uh, that our country is going through some turbulent moment, the Anglophone crisis, we are on the eve of, of an election year. Uh, we've got a lot of tips here on how we'll be able to report, uh, give report to our listeners out there that will be able to guard them and to avoid violence uh, in the country. The U.S. mission in Cameroon promotes the rule of law, democracy, and the respect for human rights. The U.S. Embassy thinks that workshops like the workshop on peace journalism and electoral reporting is an important step in furthering democracy in Cameroon, promoting the protection of human rights, and in Cameroon will be having a very important elections in 2018. Professor Stephen Youngblood also animated working sessions with civil society organizations in Boya, presenting ways of media civil society partnership to promote peace and reconciliation efforts in times of conflict. Also capital were sessions with the moderator of the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, the Right Reverend Samuel Funky Forba, the regional delegate of communication for the Southwest region, Madame Rosette B. Achu, and the Secretary General at the Southwest Governor's Office. Oh, it's a sacrifice that money cannot pay. And uh, if I listen to the program already executed and what is still ahead of you, I just want to thank God that uh, you could have time and make this um, sacrifice for the sake of our nation and our people. You know, in Cameroon, I don't know whether there's a word in journalism like that, we do what I call inciting journalism. When we bring news, we just want to incite the people, and so that kind of journalism is top in Cameroon, and it's bringing a lot of divide, especially within this present situation of the Anglophone problem. And there's a lot of inciting journalism going on, and people react emotionally to that, and it's bringing real upheavals instead of peace. So I think your coming is very timely. We are very thankful to God that you can come in at this crucial moment in the life of our history to see how you can change the mentalities of journalists who are the people who can make an unmake society, you know, they can burn gates for communication. That's the reason why we are here. He's accompanied by, of course, the offices that you know, members of the CCM. That's why we are here, delegate. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. And in the name of the Minister of uh, Communication, Issa Chiruma Bakari, you are welcome into our delegation. Thank you. Reverend called me and told me of your visit that I should get to the governor, who is the chief uh, executive officer of the region to announce your visit and your subsequent visit to his office. I was there yesterday to book the audience. Unfortunately, they are in, a gov they are in their governor's uh, semester's uh, semester meeting. So okay. As you said, next year, the because we don't know, exactly. we don't know the calendar of the election. Exactly. But in principle, there are supposed to be four elections next year. 
And with all what is happening within the region, nobody is ignorant of what is happening within the South Coast and the North Coast region. I think if you can contribute your, your own quarter by calming the situation, by choosing your language during your meetings, to permit our offsprings, to permit our children who have almost lost one academic year, go back to school as from September, I think we shall be very, very grateful. And he still will hold you behind us. As I say, the whatever you are going to be, to be doing and to be doing on the field, know that we have our back. Discussions at all the quarters centered on the importance of the project and on the need for more opportunities to be given journalists to engage in responsible practice for the good and stability of the country.